think about possible interview questions and how you plan to answer them. If you're dealing with people who, um, you know, are like reentry people, what have you, they're going to have to explain their story. Now, understand, everybody's looking for success and progress. What you did five years ago, ten years ago, hopefully you're not the same person, hopefully you've improved. So, um, you know, this is something that they need to plan out how they're going to explain. And also, uh, gaps in employment. How, how would you explain a gap in employment if you haven't uh, worked in like six months? What happens is the longer you are unemployed, the less likely people want to employ you. It's kind of like dating, okay, young <laughs> ladies? When you see that handsome young man and he stumbles over, starts talking to you, and you take it to the next level, like, well, do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, what's that? No, I ain't had a girlfriend in two years. <laughs> you, see what, you see what's happening? All right, so for your people who have these job gaps, okay, they need to say they were self-employed or something, okay? You, you need to explain it, you know, there's no, you're not as attractive, okay? See, first thing they hear is like, huh, man, he's handsome, this that. Yeah, he had a girlfriend in two years. Something wrong with you. So if nobody else wanted to hire you, why should I hire you, all right? Um, with the population we work with, um, oh, excuse me, tell me who you work with. Oh, I work with the Earn Center. Um, oh. A lot of people um, haven't; they may not have been employed for years. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I always tell them if it comes up in an interview is to say, um, you know, I, I chose to be a, a stay-at-home mom and raise my young children, and now that they're of school age, I'm ready to get back into the workforce. Mm -hmm. what do you okay. Think about that? Okay. No, no, that's that's good. Once again, you have to be able to cover that gap, okay, in your in your work history if you haven't worked for a while. Yes. I work with uh, formerly incarcerated folks, um, mm -hmm. and so uh, a lot of times we have to make the decision whether we want to count the experience that they did while they were incarcerated um, mm -hmm. and make decisions about how we're going to list um, uh, and in what cases we're going to list. And I was wondering if anybody had any tips. Um, for that process? A lot. Um, there are, for people that are incarcerated, many of them have had jobs inside the inside the prison system which are very useful outside. For example, some operate forklifts, some work for Unicor, some get um, serve safe certified while they're incarcerated, some have gotten their GEDs while they're incarcerated. I mean, there's a whole host of things. Some have had jobs in the kitchen uh, where they are actively cooking. So you really have to, but you shouldn't be afraid, at least in my mind, of putting those things in. It covers the gap, and it certainly gives them credence as to what, what job, abil um, job abilities they have and vocational abilities they have. So, I mean, you're going to have to explain it in today's world, so playing hide the ball is not really an option anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's look under a presentation. Uh, next thing, be courteous to everyone that you meet on the way there. All right, this is, this is like a, a classic salesman story. Okay, so guy has interview with a company, not, not to hold up, guy has a sales presentation with a large company. He's excited, he's gonna come in, get that big account. So as he's rushing in the door, he sees old timer outside, sweeping the sidewalk. So he runs in, all right, talks to the secretary. Okay, so I'm here for my interview with uh, Mr. Johnson. All right, that was him outside there. Okay, sweet boy. What are the odds of this person getting that sale? Because they did not respect everybody that they saw in the area, and the owner of the company, because it was his company, was outside sweeping the front. All right, so you want to make sure that your chargers, chargers understand that when they're in that job interview mode, to be polite and courteous to everyone especially the secretary. What's the secretary's or the receptionist's second title? The gatekeeper, okay? If you can't get past the gatekeeper, you're gonna have problems, all right? So you wanna make sure that they understand that just because you're going to interview with the human resource or the personnel manager, what have you, that receptionist is as important. One of the things that um, a lot of companies 
do, especially with young people, is they kind of test you out. They will overbook interviews, all right? So your person has an interview at 1 o'clock, they get there at 1, 1 1.15, reception's like, yeah, well, they running late. All right, sit down. It's 2 o'clock now. Man, I came out here. My interview was at 1. They just got me sitting here, you know. Yo, when he going to be done? Come on. Damn. All right. Let me tell you what I tell people. Bring a book or a newspaper. Now, nowadays, you know, they can entertain themselves on your phone. So you can sit there calm. Because one of the things that happens is, once again, that gatekeeper, at the end of the day, in the interview process, the uh, interviewer may have two or three candidates that they're thinking about. Receptionist, those pretty much are going to Excuse me, receptionist. But on three, which did you like the best? So if you were that person sitting out there acting all frustrated and you know kicking attitude, I guarantee you the receptionist is not 